Okay, so how? So correct me. Drake is op- is is a part of like some of the re- locations, or is going to be a part of the locations, or he's not part of the locations. So what happened is, because um, I saw the headline about Drake getting involved yeah, with some yeah. Dave's Hot Chicken. He has uh, ownership in the entire like. In the entire brand, right? So, so Drake owns a piece of Dave's Hot Chicken. Yeah, now. a very small piece of Dave's okay. Hot Chicken. And he's also like a spokesman for the brand. So he'll help us with like different promotions that we do. Um, for his birthday, we linked up with him and we gave out like free sandwiches to everybody that came to the store. How did that happen? He's just a fan. He's in LA. He loves yeah, the chicken. Yeah, man. He, he loves the chicken and he's a super dope guy and he's an amazing person. And, uh, you know, after hearing about the story, uh, I think he just wanted to kind of, you know, be a part of the brand and help out any way he can. So it's been super cool, man. And uh, Drake calls you answer. He calls, I answer. You got to be like, how can we get you involved, man? Oh, yeah. It's like, what up, Drake? Let's get you involved. No, I'm saying if Drake reaches out, it's like he's the biggest fucking artist. You got to get him involved. Yeah. Like, um, it was kind of like surreal to us to even hear that that was a possibility, right? Where somebody's like, because imagine if if you're in the parking lot with $900 and somebody comes up to you, yeah, and they're like, hey, two or three years from now, Drake's going to offer to be a part of your company. You're going to be like, it's all crazy. right, dude, like order your food and get out. You know what I mean? Like, you're not going to believe them, but you know, it's, it's wild. I mean, look, you guys are definitely on your way to be in like the next big franchise, 700 yeah. locations already in the works. Yeah. I, I think they said we're one of the fastest growing chains in, in like US in America. Yeah, the US food is amazing. Well, no, I mean, it's been five years since you were in a parking lot. Yeah. yeah. And that uh, shit's crazy. Yeah. I didn't realize that. I thought you guys were at least around like, I was like, oh, maybe it was like an LA thing for like 10 years and now uh, it's finally like no, five yeah. years, dude. Yeah, dude. It's, it it's was, happened overnight. Yeah, it was like an overnight thing. Sometimes it's still surreal to us, you know? I think the company, why there's like three or 4,000 employees we have and, you know. What would be some of the like uh, business side of this that you've kind of, because anytime you scale that fast, yeah, you go through like a learning curve. Of course. You fuck up, you adjust. You get it together. What are some of the things that you learned on, on you know, for anybody who's an up and coming business person or an up and coming restaurant owner? Uh, what are some of the things that you kind of had to learn on the fly, mm. or some of the mistakes that you made that you guys kind of, yeah. you, you know, go, you, go first? you guys can kind of share to kind of, you know, because a lot a lot of people might be watching this who have a food truck, yeah, yeah. you know, who might want to scale and get a brick and mortar yeah, or, yeah. I don't know, bro. Uh, I mean, I would definitely say uh, partners are very important. You know, I think a lot of entrepreneurs, when they start a business, they're afraid to bring in other partners mm-hmm. because there's this fear that somebody's going to come over and take over your business and you're going to lose percentage and things like that. Uh, I think what we found is you need to find somebody that you trust, somebody that's experienced in the line of work you're in, and you need to be able to let people help you grow your brand, right? So there was this interesting saying is like, w- would you rather have 100% of a grape or, you know, 50% of a watermelon? For right? sure. For yeah. sure. Right? So for, for me, the most important lesson has been bringing in the right partners, people you have good chemistry with, people you can grow the company with, people that have the same goals as you, right? Because mm-hmm. you can bring in partners that have different goals, and that's, that's going to mess everything up. So for me, the biggest thing is, as a business owner, it's okay to bring in partners. It's okay to partner up with people that are big in the line of work you're in that can help you out. Yeah, I think that that's something, like you said, I think that's some pride shit. I think at times, you know, especially in the music industry, people are always like, yeah. it's like, dude, partnering with the right people, if you can make a billion dollars, but, you know, it's like it's like most people would rather make a million dollars and say they own their yeah. everything than make like 500 million and yeah, say that. Yeah, it's interesting. It's like... Know. Dude, to me, it's like, yeah. and there's this like things like, oh yeah, well they want to work with you to make money, but it's like, well that's obvious. Dude. This is business. People are in business to make money. You mm-hmm. know, people get into business with you to make money. If you're gonna be at that mindset, well, like yeah, people just want to make. Well, obviously, dude. But the thing is, you want to make money together, right? right? You, you, so you partner up. And you, you gotta make help money. each other. Yeah, yeah, man. It like, has to be. You gotta more. bring in expertise that like I can't mm-hmm. do. For yeah, sure. yeah. I think that franchise model partner is like a whole together. like that's a whole new world. That's like a world that I'm sure is like. Yeah, man. Because yeah. it's it's. I mean, because there's this thing about it is like right when you're. Like you feel this sense of ownership to the brand because you're a founder, you started it, right? And then a franchisee is a person that believed in your brand enough to, you know, we're doing 10 store deals minimum. By the time they invest in these 10 stores, each store is a, you know, let's say $700,000 build out. They're so anybody who wants to start with y'all, they got to commit to 10. It's about a 10 store commitment, yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. So they need to be experienced enough to handle those 10 stores, right? Yeah. And 
by the time they open those 10 stores, they've invested so much money into your brand that now they feel a sense of ownership where they also feel like, hey, this is my idea. I feel like you guys should do this. So you also have to find, again, this balance of, this is not just my brand anymore. Mm -hmm. you know, I have franchisees that have invested as much time and money as I have into this brand. It's that, yeah, it's their brand too. Yeah, and I they own 10 locations. Yeah, and I have to respect their opinion because they're also living off of this brand. So if I don't listen to what they have to say and I just run it however we want and they're not happy, it's not going to keep expanding, right? So it's all like this balancing act. It's all about like, um, you know, understanding the people around you and making sure like everybody can win. Who's been outside of Drake, obviously? Who's, who do you think is like your guys' is like most famous fan? Drake aside, because we know Drake's Man. an owner now. But like, uh, who do you guys know is just always just getting chicken? Well, Whether it's delivered to the studio or <laughs> an athlete or... We have a lot of... Uh, actually, a couple of our investors are... Samuel L. Jackson's one of our investors also. So Samuel L. Jackson owns a little bit uh, also of Dave's Hot Chicken. So or, it's, uh, it's, Dave's, it's Dave's Hot motherfucking chicken. I, dude, <laughs> I keep saying he needs to make our training videos. Just come up here like, I want these motherfucking tenders. But uh, Michael Strahan... <laughs> Is another one of our investors, um, uh, Maria Shriver. Wow. Yeah, so there's like a lot of people. And then on the customer side, I mean, dude, the amount of people we've seen come to Dave's Hot Chicken. Everybody's it's, here, it's, right? Yeah. Like, it's, 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 I'm just <laughs> blown us away, dude. Like Eddie Murphy's and like people just, yeah. the like people that we grew up idolizing mm -hmm. And we we're, we're like, dude, are they really at Dave's right now? Yeah. Or are they really posting? How does Samuel Dave's? Jackson get involved? Just being a fan? Uh, through Bill, and, like again, we uh, when when we brought in Bill and John, mm -hmm. they kind of had this network of people that I work with. They could pull Pe from, yeah. yeah, people that trusted them because they'd already done this twice, right? So for them, it, it was just easy to reach out and be like, hey, this is a we think this is a great concept, so we think you guys should be involved. Right. And on top of that, they see the brand and a lot. And the cool thing about Dave's is they didn't need to do a lot of convincing because most people were like, they were oh, yeah, yeah. They're like oh, oh yeah oh yeah we know yeah, this brand yeah games. i'm in you know yeah so you know it was really cool for us so. 